Praise the Lord. I hope this video finds you doing well. Um, we're going to have a Bible study tonight, and I'm just going to get right into it. I'm not going to do a whole lot of uh, intro before we start. We're just going to get right into uh, our Bible study. In the past in the past few weeks, we've been studying the altars um, that we find in the Old Testament. And uh, so I want to kind of continue upon that, kind of finish that series tonight. Uh, but if you haven't been here, you won't, you won't need to be here. Um, we are going to talk about um, an altar that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And I at least hope you're familiar with it. Um, but we have talked about the altars of Gideon. Gideon had to tear down the altars first before he built his own altar. And of course, the altar represents our prayer, our commitment our dedication to God. It, it represents our worship before God. And to Gideon build an altar after he had tore down the altars of the other gods. It, it, we talked about the Eastern tribes, how they built an altar as a memorial before God to remember uh, what God had done and for others to see uh, that they still remember what God had done in their lives. So we talked about no Noah and how God had preserved him. So he built an altar before the Lord and, and God showed him uh, that rainbow, that promise from God. And another person who saw a promise from God was Abraham and Isaac, and they built altars before God because of that. And of course, Abraham built another altar that uh, he was he was told to sacrifice his own son Isaac on. And, and so that is a... Um, that is a foreshadowing of what we're going to talk about today in our altar. Uh, Jacob, after he wrestled with God, he, he, he made an altar before God. Moses, we talked about Moses and how he built an altar and called it Jehovah Nissi because the Lord is my banner. He is my victory. Uh, see, the Israelites had just defeated the Amalekites, and uh, that's the one where Moses had to keep his hands up as long as, as, long as he kept his hands up. Um, <clears throat> the battle was being won by the Israelites, um, but he called that Jehovah Nisi, the Lord is my banner. We talked about Joshua and how he built an altar and wrote the laws of the Lord on the altar. There's nothing wrong with when we come before God. Matter of fact, we should. We should quote scripture when we get before the Lord. We got to know the word first, but we should bring the word before God and remind him of what his word says and remind ourselves of what the word says when we come before God with our altars. Elijah, um, he wrote, he built an altar uh, and, and he proved to the prophets of Baal that his God was greater than their gods. Our, our altars can be used for a lot of different things, uh, but we come before God with prayer. We come before God with worship and that's our altar. We, we come before God when things are going good. We come before God when things are going bad, but we come before God because we, we know who to turn to in times of trouble. And we know who to give praise to in the times that things are going good. <clears throat> Other altars were built by many great men in the Bible that we haven't discussed on Wednesday night, but none compares to the altar we're gonna, we're gonna talk about tonight. This was an unusual altar because it was not made with man's hands. It wasn't made with stone, although the cornerstone was hung on it. The altar was not overlaid with, with bronze, although I'd rather have Jesus more than silver and gold. This altar did not involve any work from us or cost us anything, but we receive from it the priceless gift that is brought by his grace. By now you know that this altar is better known to us as the cross. And I know you might say, well, you said it, it, it wasn't built by man's hand. Somebody built that cross that he was hung on, yes, but in, no man uh, took his life. He laid it down. He is that altar. He put himself there and he died and he, he was the sacrifice in our altar. So when things go wrong and when things go good, where do we turn to? Where do we go? Where is, where is the altar that never changes? That is the cross. The cross is where we go. The, the altar is already built. The sacrifice has already been made for everything that we will ever need. You see, the Israelites were instructed to build an altar. The Israelites were, were instructed to build an altar that was made of bronze. It was overlaid with bronze. It was called the brazen altar. 
And on that altar, every year they would sacrifice, and daily they would sacrifice, but every year they would sacrifice on the Day of Atonement and sacrifice for the sins of Israel. The shepherds would lay the lambs, and in in, in later on we see the shepherd would the shepherds himself would lay the lambs in a carved out rock in preparation for that sacrifice. They would find the most spotless lamb that they could find, and they would carve a rock out, and they would put lay this lamb in that rock so it would be preserved until the day it would be sacrificed. Many of you have heard me say this before, but if you haven't, I'm going to say it again. This, what they called that rock, was a manger. Does that sound familiar to you? In this Christmas season that we're in, Jesus was laid in a manger. I don't think that was a coincidence. I don't think it was a coincidence at all that that the, the writer calls it a manger because he understood all of these things in Jewish custom, because he understood that Jesus was that lamb. He was the lamb that had come to take away the sins of the world. That's why when John the Baptist saw him, he said, behold, the lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. Isaiah 53, 7 said, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb into the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was the lamb that would die once and for all. He died and sacrificed himself at the altar of the cross. Hebrews 2.9 says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. You see, that's the reason why he came. He wasn't just a, 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 a baby in a manger. He wasn't just a a baby born in a stable, in a barn. Some say in a cave. He wasn't just a baby that was born. This baby grew up to be a man that would die for you and me at the altar of the cross. Thank God for his sacrifice. Thank God that we can go to that altar in times of trouble. We can go to that altar in times of rejoicing and know that he rejoices with us. So in this Christmas season, the sad part is we see a lot of people, especially in this year, 2020, this Christmas season, we see a lot of people who are fearful. We see a lot of people who are experiencing sicknesses or anxiety or depression They're experiencing, they have experienced loss throughout this year. They're experiencing financial strain and the list goes on and on and on. And there are so many people in this world today who don't know where to turn. But I'm glad, I'm glad that I have somewhere to go. I'm glad that we have somewhere to go as children of God. If you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself a child of God and you have dedicated your life to him, we have somewhere to go. But sinner friend, if you're listening this to this today, you have somewhere to go to. You can go to the cross as well. Isaiah 53, 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was wounded for your sins. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. See, the irony of it all is that this holiday, we, it causes so much stress for so many people, but it's supposed to be the celebration of the one who brings us peace, the one who brings us joy, the one who brings us healing, the one who brings us salvation. So let us not forget the reason why we celebrate this Christmas season. As Christians, it's great for us to celebrate the birth of our Savior. There's nothing wrong with remembering the promise that he gave to Mary and Joseph and Simeon. We can remember the proclamation of the angels to the shepherds. We can remember that star that the wise men followed. And we can remember the gifts that they gave 
gold, frankincense, and myrrh as we give gifts to each other. And I don't think there's anything wrong with celebrating this season, but in the midst of this season, and in the midst of celebrating his birth, we can't forget who Jesus is. Notice I didn't say who Jesus was, who Jesus is to us now. And because of his birth, there was his death. Because of his death, there was a resurrection. And because of that, I now have life. Let us not forget the reason why we celebrate. It was the gift that was given to us, the gift of Jesus, but the gift that didn't stop in a manger. He's the gift that keeps on giving. And I know that sounds cliche-ish, but it, it's the truth. He's the gift that keeps on giving over and over and over again to us. It didn't stop at Calvary. It didn't stop when he left the tomb. He keeps giving and giving and giving to us over and over again. Thank God he didn't stay in a manger. But his gift went on. His gift went about healing. His, this gift went about casting out demons. He went about raising the dead. He, he taught those around him how to live godly lives. And guess what? He's still doing that today. There's still healing available for us today through Jesus Christ. There's still life available to those who are dead in their trespasses of sin. There's still peace available to those who will reach out to him and run to the altar of the cross. Thank God for the gift of Jesus Christ. He's still healing. He's still setting people free. He's still giving us peace and comfort. His spirit is still giving us joy. We can still go to the altar. We can still go to the cross. Everything you need is provided. That's a reason to celebrate. Not just the season, but we celebrate him. Life is going to be filled with problems. There's many of you who've experienced loss this year. And there's some of you, maybe not this year, but you have experienced loss, you've experienced the loss of loved ones who have gone on to be with the Lord. And, and this season just reminds you of those family members. But let me tell you, there's still peace for you today. The Prince of Peace is still here. As we celebrate, as we celebrate this time together, let us celebrate not just the Jesus in the manger, but the one who died for you so that you could have peace. That's a reason to celebrate. For most of us, the Christmas lights bring some joy to our lives. I've heard a lot of people last couple of weeks say, man, I just love to see the Christmas trees and the lights. It just, it just, it just uplifts you just to see those things, those lights and the Christmas music. It calms our spirits for some of us, but others, it triggers our thoughts of those loved ones. It triggers our thoughts of the financial strain that some of us will go through. It, it triggers the thoughts of those concerns about presence and the gatherings that we would have or the lack of gatherings that we're having this year. But when you have those moments, when you have those moments, run to the cross. Run to the cross at Christmas because he's the one that we celebrate. Run to the cross as we celebrate. Fall at his feet again and allow him to give you peace that passes understanding. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And if you already have that, run to the cross and rejoice that we have joy in this season. That we have peace in this season and give him praise. Bow at his feet and give him praise for what he has done. Run to the cross. Run to the altar. Let this reason for this season be the one who lifts you up and gives you peace.
Let the lights all around us remind us of the light of the world. Let the triangular shape of our Christmas tree remind us of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Let the shape of the candy canes remind you of the staff of the shepherds and the message they received when they said glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Let those same candy canes, those red and white colors, those stripes remind you of the stripes that would, would put on his back and the blood that was shed. Those red colors remind you of the blood that was shed for you and the things that are available to you because of his shed blood. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. Oh, it's the blood that gives us strength from day to day, but we've got to run to the cross. And let the white of the candy cane remind you of the purity we have in him now. The fact that our sins were black, but now we are white as snow because his blood has washed us clean. And let the circle-shaped wreath remind you of the wholeness we have in him and the unity the church has in Christ. This Christmas season, I hope you remember not just the birth, but the death of Jesus Christ, but not just remember it, but to run to that cross, run to the altar, and give him praise, regardless of what you're doing, going through. He deserves praise. And I promise you, if you do, you'll not find superficial joy or superficial peace. You'll find the peace of God that will never run out. You'll find the love and the joy of God that will never run out. I want to pray for you before, before I'm done here today. And I want to ask God to bless you, regardless of what you're going through today. And that God would bless us in this Christmas season and help us to remember who he was and help us to be that light for him to others and show them the peace and the love of God that they might run to the altar to, the altar of his cross. Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you regardless of what season of life these people are that are listening to me today. Father, I pray that you'll give them peace today. You'll give them joy. You'll give them comfort. You'll give them strength. You'll give them hope today. Lord, I pray that you'll do that as they run to you. Lord, I pray, Father, just as, just as you were born in a manger, just as your son was born in a manger, that, Lord, I, I know, Father, that he didn't, he didn't come here just so we could celebrate his birth, but that we could celebrate his death and his resurrection. Lord, that we can understand the whole picture of it. He wasn't just a cute baby. He was a baby that was sent to live and to die for us, to be that lamb, to be sacrificed once and for all. Thank you for taking our sins. Lord, I pray for those who are sick right now, that they'll come running to you, running to your cross, running to that altar. Lord, that you might bring them healing. For those who are in depression, Lord, I pray they'll run to you that they might find peace enjoy in this time. Those who have lost loved ones and their minds keep thinking about how much they love uh, love them and wish they were here with us. Lord, help them to run to your altar. Lord, I know we'll never forget them, but Lord, help them, give them that hope again, that peace again, that they're going to see them again one day when they step into heaven, all because of your cross. And Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you thanks for what you're doing. Lord, I give you thanks, Father. I give you praise for what you're going to do, Lord. And I pray that each one would have a blessed Christmas, Lord. Lord, relieve the stress off of each one. And we'll give you praise. We'll give you glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for watching.